Good afternoon. I just wanted y'all to know I'm thinking about you. I've been really sick, and uh, that's why I haven't been able to make any decent videos. I just am exhausted. Um, I got the stomach flu um, on the weekend of the 8th, and uh, it just like went through the family after a, a 4th of July get-together we had with friends of Michael's and uh, Finn got it first and then Maggie who didn't get it bad and then me and Mike got it together and then Denny Jr. and uh, I'm still recovering you know it's the 12th today and uh, today was a rough day but uh, I got through it and I'm glad that's over um, I just I don't feel well I don't feel well um, I don't know if it's the fibro. I don't know if it's something else going on. I won't know till uh, I get. Uh, I did an MRI today, and I got a couple of doctor's appointments, and uh, they just have some things going on, and it's just not great. And you know, and then my van has broken down again, and so it's been sitting for a while since before I got sick flu it's been sitting um, in the parking lot in the handicap spot I feel bad about it but uh, until I knew for sure that my mobile mechanic would be able to take it I didn't want to have it towed over to my kids house until I knew for sure and he should be coming next Wednesday to work on the van so I'm gonna make sure he's coming and then I will call AAA which I'm so glad I got and have it towed over there um, because I can only tow it once per incident and uh, I want to make sure that my mechanic is going to be able to come and work on it so yeah more vehicle troubles but you know I, I talk with other residents here and they all have old cars and they all just fix a repair daily and that's what you do and um, Tonight I locked myself out of the apartment because I'm just out of it. I uh, thought I had the right set of keys and it was the wrong set of keys. And the funny thing is, just as the door was about to click shut, I said, do you have the right keys? I didn't check it. I just believed that I did. And, um, <laughs> well, I didn't. But Dawn was very sweet. She's the manager and... She said, I'm surprised this didn't happen sooner. I knew you were due. She's got a good sense of humor. I appreciate that. And I get to talk with a really lovely woman because I was just like, oh my God, I don't have my phone. It's in the apartment. I don't have my keys. i am got an empty wagon and I'm dragging it around. And this one thing I'm going to do very, very soon maybe tomorrow if I can get Maggie to pick me up is go and make a couple extra keys I'm gonna give one to Maggie and I'm going to do something with the third key because I've got one here I want to give one to Maggie and then I would like one that I either tie around my neck or have it um, some of the people I guess I'm sorry um put them above their, their door thingy. I I don't know if I feel comfortable with that, but um you know I'll see how I feel about that. But uh I suppose it's not a horrible idea. Oh my. That was just distressing, but I got to sit and talk with her and she's a really nice woman. I told her if you ever want to stop by, I'm in 108. She said, thanks. So we'll see. And, uh, yeah, I got to learn about her and how she ended up here. And she said it so eloquently. She said, none of us ever expected to end up here. She said, not that it's bad. It's, it's nice. She said, but we all had ideas we all had homes didn't you have a home i said i had a home yeah and uh she got sick and she lost everything and i identify so you know i was thinking today it's a funny thing 
I was thinking about the term life is unfair. And I started thinking about the history of mankind. It doesn't matter how you think we got here or the earth got here or whatever. The fact of the matter is, is we started out extremely primitive. And uh, we've always been fighting for survival, for just our needs. And then needs and wants and as we progressed as uh, communities, societies governments it expanded from needs to wants and desires as well and uh, you know it's has it ever been fair <laughs> life has it ever been fair it just seems to me no we are always going to be clawing <laughs> tooth and nail fighting for our basic necessities. Nobody escapes it. And it seems like it's getting harder and harder to achieve and keep it. I would imagine even the rich sometimes are worried that their fortunes could be gone in, in a day. I mean, it happened in the Great Depression. Sometimes it happened to famous stars who gave their money to the wrong people or let the wrong people uh, manage their money, and soon it was gone. So nobody is ever 100% secure, are they? No. So I figure that life is about as fair as it can get. We're all kind of in the same boat. Some of us will have fancy boats and some of us will have leaky boats. Some of us won't have a boat at all. Maybe they're the lucky ones. I'm not sure. If you've got your health, maybe you just don't need a boat. But, you know, Rachel reminded me today, she said, Mom, be thankful. Be thankful that you had a little place where you could be sick, where you had your bucket with your bag, where you had the toilet to go to, where you had some place to lay down where you had a place for Walmart to bring you Sprite and crackers and things that you needed. And so I am very grateful that uh, I wasn't in a broken down van on the side of the road somewhere and not knowing the area and not knowing who I'd call for help for repair. You know, I have my mechanic down here. I know him. Um, he's done a great job so far. It's not his fault. He kept telling me, sell it, sell it, sell it. And I'm like, it doesn't make sense anymore to sell it. It doesn't make sense. I'm just going to have to start over. And what if the same thing happens again? He said, oh, you just need a car with cheaper parts. And I said, yeah, but it's not cheap if every part needs to constantly be replaced. Then it becomes an expensive car. So I said, I think I'm just going to keep my van and let's just keep fixing it. So that's kind of long and short of it, you know. And I'm starting to get really dizzy again, so... It's time for me to end this. I just want you guys to know I was thinking of y'all. and I know I've forgotten some prayers. I know there's some prayers that hit me, that reached me after the fact. And, and I, I can't remember. I, I'm sure I wrote them down, but I'm just really tired. And... Uh, my daughter, Rachel, certainly could use a lot of prayers, and uh, I, I ask that you pray for Michael, Maggie, and Denny, that uh, they just need rest. 
they need a break. They're getting weary. Maybe pray that God will strengthen them and give them renewed vigor to just press on. And I know they will. But it's nice to press on when you feel refreshed. You know, and they're just not getting that and they need it. And, uh, and Bonnie, she's going to be going through a lot of changes and new decisions in her life and uh, a lot of change. And I know it's hard. Change is hard. Risk taking or whatever may come down the road. And for me, I just want to feel better. I really want to feel better. I'm so tired. Yeah. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Just wanted to check in with my peeps, you know. I know that even though it says 16, 60 something subscribers, there's a small cluster that actually watches my videos. And uh, I think about a third or less. Yeah. And uh, I appreciate that you're here. And I do it for you, really. There's no other reason I do it at this point in time. And so I just want to touch base with y'all. And, uh, yeah. That's it. I've been, I've been watching John Payne tear jerkers I uh, he was so beautiful when he was young in the 40s and uh, two of my favorites and if you need a good cry remember the day with Claudette Colbert and John Payne and um, this was a good one too um, sentimental journey and that was with Maureen O'Hara and John Payne. I also watched a very, very interesting one, not a tearjerker, but just kind of like a thought provoking for the, the time. It was quite um, different. Um, Razor's Edge. That was a good movie. They just don't make them like that anymore. And then, of course, The Miracle on 34th Street, and YouTube will not let you have it for free, but I searched on Google, and I found it for free. It was in a little tiny box, but I still got to watch it. That was John Payne's favorite all-time movie he ever did. Um, he wanted to do a sequel, I understand, and uh, it never got made. He actually wrote a sequel to Miracle on 34th Street. That's the 1947 Miracle on 34th Street. John Payne and uh, Maureen O'Hara, again. They were good together. They, they were great. Him and uh, Claudette uh, Colbert, uh, I think that's the right pronunciation, uh, were excellent together. Such tear-jerking movies. And yeah, you just let me just cry my heart out um, when, you know, when I needed it on the 10th and a few days after as well. As a matter of fact, last night was uh, the last one I watched. And uh, yeah. so uh, that's what I've been up to. And tonight's the first night I actually ate real food. <laughs> I, I ordered a steak from Walmart. My mother always gave us steak when uh, after we recovered from our flu. And, uh, you know, there's something about steak that just, I don't know, it kind of strengthens you, you know. always feel better after the flu when I've had a piece of steak. So this was the first day I was able to actually eat real food. And it felt so good. So... That's it, guys. Just checking in, and uh, hopefully soon I'll feel well enough to, I don't know, do something. I can't even babysit right now. I'm just not doing good. Okay, then. And if you're not doing good, I love you, and I'll pray for you. 
okay. Bye.